So when you've when you've done the uh, uh, you know the commitment, you've, you you're out there. You're saying you're going to do something. To do to actually make the change, um, you need to actually know what it is you're changing. So this is where measurement comes in. Now measurement. Um, the IUCN has done a, a study of available measurements out there. And what they found is that 80% of businesses felt they were missing the adequate me uh, metrics to actually measure, understand and make the change that they need to. How do you prioritise without a metric? And they came up with this diagram, which as, as I know it looks complicated, it really does summarise the, the parameters on which we are trying to measure. There is the company aspects where they can action and there is the environmental impact which happens at a location. So if you think about those as the, as the two axes, then they identify two groups without that overlay. So for a corporate to be able to understand their footprint telling them that there's a problem in the environment isn't necessarily easy for them to connect to their product. So um, people like Doug, um, and Doug actually was uh, the originator of, of measurement for plastic. Uh, uh, Doug and his colleagues established the Plastics Disclosure Project. And if you can see very, very focused tightly, you can see that group one is all about giving information to corporates for delivery uh, and for action. So I would like to throw to Doug to take us a little bit more through that, uh, through plastic disclosure, PDP. All right, thank you, Trish. So uh, the plastic disclosure project is very much like uh, carbon reporting and water reporting. Uh, we launched this many years ago and it was a bit too early for the, the market and the world to undertake, but now with the excitement in the circular economy and the interest to uh, really make good on our commitments, you cannot uh, manage if you don't measure what you have. And so if you've made a commitment for five years or 10 years out, uh, you need to set a baseline measurement of what you're using, what you're recovering, and what you're recycling. If you could go to the, the next slide. Um, you see there that we do only recycle 15% and some say 10% of all plastic globally. This goes back to our supply and demand uh, challenge. And, and one other thing I wanted to comment there is Trish talked a lot about uh, food and beverage and, and healthcare type uh, personal care products. Remember also that the athletic wear and many other industries are also chasing for the same material. So PET can be used for fabric, like my suit, which is my plasticity suit, and uh, Adidas, Nike, Reebok, all of them are looking in the same zone for uh, PET bottles, just like the bottlers are looking for that. So some of the challenges is how are we competing with the low virgin material prices? Uh, today, that is a very big challenge. Because on the other side of the coin, companies often say, well, it costs too much for me to use recycled content, so I'm not going to buy it. So we, we're in this stuck in this conundrum, and unless someone uh, really shows the demand to purchase, you're not going to get the investment in the entrepreneurs and the sorting and the collection to get you that feedstock. Uh, COVID has brought all kinds of uh, issues. We've heard about that in, in this conference uh, with PPE and food waste. That will probably bring new opportunities in uh, reverse supply chain, recovery of material back from the home uh, by the delivery people. Um, one of the big challenges is the lack of rules and standards in packaging. If we do not standardize the materials that we use to wrap a product with the colors and the chemical content and the melting points, very difficult for the recyclers and the people in the, in the chain to recover that and collect it landfill avoidance, um, and communities often also think, well, I don't have recycling and I can't get into the game, and therefore they put their hands up and they say, I need to landfill it or I need to burn it. And that's not true. Uh, there's many machines that can be scaled across small communities that can help with just grinding and shredding and packing and densifying. 
so that they can get into the, the supply chain of moving valuable material into a market. And that's some of what PDP helps to bring out. Next slide, please. Because when you start to measure what you have, you, you understand what the volume has, is there. Uh, just in the circular economy uh, market and just looking at what the US produces in terms of packaging waste that goes through a landfill, estimate of $8 billion worth US of plastic going unsorted, untreated. And there's a $4 trillion market estimated for the circular economy. But our systems are not in place at all to drive this. And this is in the next slide. This is what we want to be talking about uh, with all of you, uh, you know, in this community. Measure, manage, report. If you can't do that, if you can't put a mirror up to your face and your company and your industry, your municipality, and say, oh, I do this, it's not meant to call anyone out. It's not meant to be a bad number. It's just giving you the number and the power to be able to make those decisions. Uh, next slide. So we have uh, the obvious objective is to reduce the amount of waste in the environment. And that can come through a very variation of means. Obviously, no garbage. Use of recycled content, much higher volumes. Use of new materials, reusing materials. Uh, when you have PDP engagement, you then uh, have all kind of management strategies. You can look at uh, your supply chain from warehouse to warehouse. You can look at uh, material recovery, which might not be for yourself, but it might be for a third party. This is where we talked about the collaboration of groups that often never talk to each other or maybe haven't worked together. But if you have material feedstock and they didn't know you can uh, provide it, this is a great way to get that material into that supply chain. Metrics, you want to know how much you have. You also want to know um, what you're doing with your brand and your packaging. Because these days with ESG, uh, environmental and social governments, governance uh, reporting that the investment world and the pension fund world is very interested in, um, you will be a step ahead as a PDP uh, 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 participant to be able to talk about all these points. Of course, you can't get every single one and go to zero plastic use. We know that plastic needs to be used, but we don't want it to become a waste product. Next slide. I think this is for you, Trish. Um, municipalities, uh, another area, we're going to talk a little bit about that later when uh, Mr. Wycliffe comes on. But governments can make a big impact here. Uh, they can change the way that the community sorts and recovers material, the way that, way that people appreciate the water and don't let their uh, rivers, creeks, and streams flow out because that first focus uh, then gets people thinking about where does it come from, uh, who put it there, how can we recycle it. Uh, next slide, please. And now we're on to okay, so, the pump. Yes. Thank you, Doug. Um, and the, the importance of measurement should not be underestimated. Um, and what I would like to share in a little bit of, uh, uh, I will say it's a gratuitous self-promotion, um, but um, you can't argue against me, so I'm going to go do it. Um, so this is uh, a little bit about how my business has tackled this idea of how do you actually measure and, and uh, articulate that better. And we already know why. It's because investors are saying you have to. You have to manage your plastic risk. Your consumers are saying, I want clean. Employees are saying, I want to work for the companies that are clean. And essentially, regulators are prepared to regulate. Um, and that is not pretty if if you're a uh, you know, multinational, you want to actually try and, and head that off. So what we have done is we took all of the life stages of, of packaging and, and plastic packaging and boil it down to the key elements that are design related, that are uh, impact related and end of life related. So purpose of use, how what, you know, what the material is, what's its likelihood of getting into the environment and what its you know, impact is once it's there. 
And we synthesized all of that down into a single metric. And I'll show you how that works. We also have the detailed reporting, but when you're communicating with someone else, having a number helps you. Think of it like um, a temperature. You know, if, if I tell you that it's 18 degrees here, um, you know, you'll, you'll see that that's, you, you'll think, oh, very cool. But you know what it means because it's a number. So how it works is we take the company's information about a product and we apply it uh, we apply external data sets, uh, publicly available, verified third party data sets. And this is important because that melds the two together. Applying our algorithm, that then gives us, gets us down to the number. And this is important because you're measuring a product packaging by location of manufacture and consumption. And so that really starts to boil down or bring some of those impact factors that brands haven't been able to incorporate into their, into their work. It brings it in. So they know what they're measuring and they understand the impact that they need to reduce. So quite simply, here's a, a project that we've done for a client and it was all produce bags, comparing uh, paper with recycled content with straight plastic with bio. And because this was all in Australia, you can see that um, the bio bag, actually, while it should perform really well, we don't have the composting facilities uh, set up for the mass collection. You know, so ultimately, if the infrastructure isn't there, you can't get, um, you know, it, it's actually not a good thing for the environment. Uh, the recycled content produce bag ultimately uh, showed a slightly better result, and I should add, 10 is bad, big footprint. One is good, small footprint. Um, but, you know, the, the paper bag uh, actually doesn't have a really good second life because it's small, small fibres. And then we get into the detail where we can take you down to a really integral, in, uh, integral information to help you identify where you need to make the changes. It's not always polymer. It could also be your internal accountability, your contracts with your manufacturers. 